Okay, and welcome to Budget Audio Review and Upgrades today. Oh, well, we could call it an upgrade, I suppose. It's, uh, it's not really. It's just a general check you could do on a, an amplifier you just bought recently, like second-hand mainly, I would have said. I don't think it's any need to do on a brand-new amplifier. You may have bought one 5, 10, 50 years old, something like that. And, of course, the older it is, the, the chances are that something could be wrong with it. You know, it could be deteriorating or whatever. Just to give you a general check from just, just using the terminals at the back. Uh, without even having to undo it at all, nothing like that. A bit going, like going around a car and giving the four wheels a boot uh, to see what kind of condition it's in. And all we're going to do, we're going to concentrate on just make sure that it's set on the right voltage to start off with. And then we're going to go on to uh, checking the speaker terminals and the uh, DC uh, offset there of the speakers just to uh, just to make sure it falls within line. So it's not going to damage your speakers when you plug them I in. Always, always got an old pair of speakers I plug in first to any of these amps just in case. I usually plug, to be honest with you, I usually plug them straight in without doing any checking, but you may just want to do the checking first yourself, if you, especially if you've got a quite expensive pair of speakers, you don't want to turn it on and blow them up, or, or you know, turn the volume too far and all of a sudden it blows one of your tweeters, and uh, you could have found that out just by maybe checking the uh, back of your amplifier on the speaker terminals. I refer to this uh, voltage selector as 230 volts in the UK, where it kind of goes in between I've had my meter on between about 231 and 239, it does fluctuate. So this is on the switched output of this amplifier. So if we turn this on, the mains voltage will come out the back and we'll see what it says on this uh, meter. And uh, yeah, if we just let it settle down a second, and well there you can see this one's <laughs> this is the most it's actually fluctuated to be honest with you. There's quite a bit of fluctuation here on this one. Um, but it will settle down and it, it did kind of like, I've, I've done it over a period of time. Um, probably about half hour or so, just keeping an eye on it, see where it landed, and uh, yeah, it kind of it usually fluctuates between about two thirty one and about two thirty nine, somewhere around there. But as you can see, this one here, I'm quite surprised. <laughs> I wasn't expecting this. It is fluctuating uh, quite a bit there on the output of this one. As you can see, it's creeping up. Uh, well, it goes down to two two five and creeps right up to two fifty there. But generally speaking, uh, it's been. Like I said, 231 to 239. It seems to be levelling out a little bit here now. I don't know what's caused that. But now it's, it's kind of settled down and uh, okay kind of thing, you know, that range where I thought it would be. Okay, let's turn that off before we blow everyone up. Okay, so, um, yeah, in this video, like I said, I do, I do kind of state 230. But, um, yeah, wherever you are, uh, I would suggest that you have this voltage selector just a little bit higher or where you are you know if you're 240 volts bang on and you are 240 then obviously leave you on 240 but if you're like stuck like this range here 232 to 239 somewhere around there and you've got a 230 selector no sorry a 220 selector on the back i'd move it to the 240 position just you know puts in the right position uh, i'm just going to show you how to do that on a couple of amplifiers and then we're going to go on to uh actually uh look at the speakers and uh, what information you can get out of them Okay, so um, let's, let's do the voltage first. Okay, I've, ch I've just shown you a picture of the voltage selector. It's on 220 volts here in the UK. It kind of, it's around a 230 volts, something like that. So we're going to knock it up to 240 to give it a little bit of breathing so space, so to speak. You know what I mean? Rather than just have it under, just have it over. So it's got that little bit, it takes a little bit less strain off the amp, just a little bit. It's hardly anything, but it's still worth doing. Uh, while you've got the back here, it's, it's a good idea to go around and make sure all these screws are nice and tight so you've got no wobbly sockets or anything or, you know, any any of these. Just, just generally tighten them up, really. It ain't going to do no harm. I always think to just go around. You always think to find a screw undone or anything like that. But also, a little bit more important maybe than them screws is the fuse. Just make sure the fuse, these are screw kind of fuse holders. They kind of just screw in so you can change the fuse if it blows. And obviously you want to... A good solid contact there, you know what I mean? These amps get moved around over the years and whatever, and vibrations and whatever. You'll be surprised, screw, you know, screws do come a little bit loose. I, I found it more noticeably in speakers, to be honest with you, because obviously they're vibrating, uh, God knows how many times a second and all that over their lives, and some big vibrations in the bass speaker can loosen the screws a bit. Anyway, but um, the, these fuses, just get, like, make sure the screwdriver fits and you get a firm grip there. Just there, yeah, look, this one here, look, just tighten it up. Just that little bit, it may not seem a lot, but it just gives a, a, a solid, uh, tight fit there. Okay, so for this one here, uh, all we're going to undo here, hopefully you can see it. I don't like doing these videos, but we're just going to take this bracket off, basically. It's holding it in place, so it can't accidentally be moved, or not that this one can, because it's actually a plug-in and plug-out. But that's just holding the plug nicely in. And obviously make sure everything's off 
before you do this. And what we're going to do is we're going to pull it out. As you can see, it's facing downwards. This error indicates what voltage you want. Now, for instance, if you're using uh, maybe America or Japan or something like that, you would flick it over to the to the 117, so it lines up the 117. But what we're going to do, as I'm in the UK, is put actually match it up to the 240. So here's the 240. So it's just a matter of getting the error up to the 240, pushing it in nice and tight, as hard as you can go. Now I've got it on 240 volts, so that's great. And it's just a matter of uh, putting that screw in, holding the bracket on. Not easy when you're kind of at a slight angle from where you actually want to be with a screwdriver. And um, just keep doing that up nice and tight. There you go, don't overdo it, but that's going to hold that bracket in there nice and tightly and uh, hold that voltage selector in the right place. What I'm going to do now is just show you a slightly different one. So we'll just cut the video here. Okay, on this one, it's a slightly different, rather than a, like a squarish one on the other one, we've got a round voltage selector here. And as you can see, it's on. I put it on 220 on purpose here. It's on 220. We're going to change it for the UK to 240. You may want to change it, obviously, for you know, look up your voltage in your uh, area. As I said, always uh, go for a voltage that's you know, if you're 220, uh, sorry, 230, go for a 240. If you're 110, then if it's 117 on there, pick the 117. Just go up the, the voltage a little bit higher. Obviously, if you, if you are 117, then, then keep it at 117. If you are 220, keep it at 220. But in the UK, it's about 230 thereabouts. So with this one, we're just going to undo it again. Uh, just make sure you get the right size screwdriver. That that just keep unscrewing until it near enough falls out. Then we're just going to pull that out, and we're going to change it. What I'm actually going to do. It's just something slightly different. Well, no, I'll leave it as it is, but you'll get the drift. What I was going to do is we'll change it to the 240 and we're going to push it in. Now, you may think, well, that's it. I've pushed it in. All the contacts are there nice and tight. That's it. I'll turn it on just to double check it's working. And chances are it's not going to work because that screw actually does a little switch inside. So that screw's got to be done up nice and tight. Otherwise, it won't actually activate the little switch. There's a little switch on the other side of that screw that it activates. And once we've done it up, nice and tight not i don't overdo it but nice and tight too full in area work don't forget always check the fuse like i say just stick the screwdriver in there and that one's fine but you know you just may just get a little bit of a uh, movement there you just want it not you know don't overdo it but you just want it you know, tight that's it really and uh, yeah so that's this one done that's a uh, like a round multi-voltage selector Right, we've got our voltage in the right position everything's screwed in and uh, we're ready to go now now what we're going to do we're going to check the uh, DC offset on the uh, speakers. Now, this is where you'll need one of these multimeters. Uh, these are not expensive. These are about five to 10 pounds. You can get you know, a reasonable one. It may sound cheap, but uh, they're quite accurate for that price. And uh, on the multimeter, I will show you in the video as well, but we're gonna put it on the uh, DC milliamps. Um, probably, if you've got 100 milliamps on there, put it on there, that'd be fine, it should be fine. But 200, that kind of gives you a little bit more leeway. That's, that's why I usually put it on 200 milliamps. And uh, I've had a good look around the internet. The thing is also, I, uh, I've got a couple of friends, um, one of them, uh, going back a few years ago now, he used to build his own transmitters and all that kind of stuff. He's, he's well into, you know, mainly valve stuff, to be honest with you, but he's well into electronics, knows, knows a little of a lot. And another bloke, who, who I know, uh, actually works for, did used to work for Philips. And uh, having a look on the internet, we, we were just discussing this, like over the phone, a few things. Where should this... Uh, you know what kind of reading should we be getting like you know i mean how, how like up can we go a lot of people say like a certain amount of millivolts can be too high and damage the speakers etc um and their consensus and kind of looking on the internet is we're looking between null it can be plus or minus but null and about 25 millivolts somewhere in between there and that's what we'd call fine you know what i mean that's well well acceptable that's that's a good place to be on the output of these speakers um we would call slightly high, only slightly high, 25 to say 50. That would be just slightly high, we would call that. And uh, between 50 and 100. Now that, that's still okay. It could cause a little bit of distortion. And that, that also would, um, you know, maybe how high you've got the volume, you're going to start hearing just a little bit more distortion, etc. Like if you really start cranking it up. But over 100, if you went over 100, you could cause, you know, I'm not saying you've got to, but you could cause your speakers damage. More likely the tweeter, uh, them sudden spikes on the tweeter, 
could cause a little bit of damage but this would also be volume you know really the volume would affect this if you just got it on low I don't know up to halfway maybe something somewhere around there you're going to be okay like you know if you start cranking it up high and you know that you know you're over 100 and you're cranking up the volume you could damage your, your tweeter you'd probably be more likely to go out of the two of them but a lot of these speakers these days have got protection in them and stuff like that so you know if it's, if it's a newish speaker or speaker that's got protection you, you're probably going to be fine but any, anything over 100 you know i'll be i'll be wary let's put it that way you know you want to try and get that sorted out by uh, adjusting maybe adjusting the dc bias which uh, isn't covered in this video this is just showing you uh, how to measure at the back like i say i'll bring that video out uh, shortly after this so anyway let's watch the video okay um Got the meter on 200 millivolts here on the DC range, as you can see. Um, that's about where you want to be, 100 millivolts, 200 millivolt range, something like that. You can go to 2 volts there, 200, 2,000 millivolts if you want to. It'll still read OK. We're going to uh, make sure these screws are nice and tight, by the way. If they start wobbling about, they would affect the reading a little bit of contact and that. You want them fairly tight into the uh, terminals. The black goes to the negative and the uh, red will go to the positive. And this is the left speaker we're doing here at the top, just doing one channel at a time. And you may find when you put these probes in first of all that meter jumps up and it just takes a second or so to sustain so that may suddenly jump up really high but after a few seconds it'll level itself out just saying to bear in mind nothing to worry about so as we go in we'll, we'll see where she happens and this time it didn't so there you go it's about well minus eight minus nine it's been about minus 11 something like plus 11 it kind of you know goes in between them two on this particular channel here and we go to the bottom one and on the bottom one there you go, minus three, minus four, something minus five, but it's been about minus 10, minus eight. It kind of hovers around, it does fluctuate, it will go either way, fluctuating, but that's fine. So that's that amplifier done there. Okay, on this particular video, I just wanted to show you that I've got this receiver here uh, with the speakers plugged in, same setup, it's been on about 20 minutes, volume zero, uh, everything else uh, zero and uh, on auxiliary. Uh, yeah, I do test it with the speakers also plugged in a lot of these, uh, amps as well it can be done that way but obviously it's a lot easier with the speakers disconnected no wires in your way no chance of anything shorting out but uh, as you can see this uh, channel here is offering about between about minus 25 minus 22 somewhere around there and that's pretty much it i mean that's still well within the safety uh, margin there for this channel nothing to worry about but you will notice um, if i take this out gin gingerly and carefully without shorting anything out let's get rid of the speaker wires first something you probably want to tempt yourself you know just you could basically turn this amplifier on and leave it on for 20 minutes with these plugged in but um, this is a fairly straightforward one to uh, to plug in here as you can see quite a, a market well say quite you know a little bit of a difference there uh, down to about uh, seven millivolts from uh, 25 so uh, yeah about an 18 difference uh, there but nothing to worry about i haven't touched around with any of the uh, bias in there or anything like that uh, which I could do, but at the moment I'm, I'm happy with that. It's no problem at all. Still using it as it is. I haven't finished with the amplifier yet. Uh, when I get around, I'll have a little tinker about see if I'll just level them off a little bit. But uh, just another way, and this is an easier way also if you've got these kind of speaker connectors just to push the uh, the probes in there. And uh, you know, an easy way uh, to take the measurements on this particular receiver. So there you go, that's well within the air limits, so uh, nothing to worry about there. Okay, well, I hope that video and this little video altogether has been some kind of help. Maybe, you know, just shot a little bit of light or a little bit of testing you can do yourself just to uh, double check your amplifier stroke receiver. Obviously, you know, it's also, uh, you know, uh, for receivers as well. Okay, like I say, the next video I will uh, talk about the DC bias or just show you uh, how to check it, even though I didn't adjust it. But there is a couple of pots and, uh, you know, bits and pieces you can find out on the internet where to download the manuals and that to, to check you on if you want to go that further. If a few miles out on the uh, DC offset of the, uh, you know, coming off the speaker terminals at the back. Okay, until the next video, I'll say thanks for watching. I'll see you all soon.